The NHL has seen some amazing duos in the past. Brett Hall, Adam Oates, Gretzky Curry, the Sedin twins. I think when it's all said and done, you can add these two to the list. Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl. In this video, we are going to do a complete career simulation of these two players. See if the Oilers can put it all together and bring the Stanley Cup back to Edmonton. As you can see, going into year number one, they got a young Kaylor Yamamoto. Their defense is questionable, and speaking of questionable, their goaltenders are definitely that. So let's get into it, Leon and Connor. Year number one sees the Edmonton Oilers finish 8th in the NHL, 98 points, definitely a success of a year. Connor and Leon, of course, putting the team on their back, headed into the postseason. Connor doesn't quite hit the century mark, finishes with 99 points, but 1-2 and two in scoring. But unfortunately, the Oilers lose to the Vancouver Canucks in round number one of the playoffs. The second year sees Connor McDavid up to a 97 overall. Their team is looking a little bit better. Leon's up to a 94. Yamamoto's one year older. They've brought Kyle Turris up to the first line after a great year number one. They bring in Alex Edler and they bring in Antti Ranta. They also make a pretty big trade. They acquire Max Domi from Columbus. So there you go. There's your second line center. They've moved things around once again, but they're playing Tyson Berry as a forward. They end up finishing with 97 points, 12th in the NHL. McDavid and Dreisaitl not only lead their team in scoring, but they lead the league in scoring. 1-2, 118 points, and 117 respectively, miles ahead of anyone else on their roster. But as you can see, the Oilers are starting to get some depth scoring, so that's definitely a plus. And going into the playoffs, they get out of the first round, beating the Sharks, but they get swept in the second round by the Vegas. Golden Knights and to add insult to injury Calgary wins the draft lottery they pick number one these guys take home some serious hardware this year Lady Bing Hart Art Ross he also takes home the Ted Lindsay Year number three has the Oilers once again splitting up Connor and Leon, first line center and second line center. They haven't done a lot on the team front. It's relatively the exact same. They brought in some fourth liners, but aside from that, they really haven't changed up the offense. I should mention I am taking control of an Eastern Conference team, so I'm doing everything I can to stay out of the way of the Oilers. I'm basically letting the computer do everything. They also bring in Pekka Rene, but they fall off a cliff. 85 points completely missing out on the postseason it was a down year for everyone and you know when Connor McDavid gets 94 points it's a down year that just goes to show how good of a player he is Leon has 86 points they get some decent secondary scoring but Jack Eichel gets his cup before Connor you hate to see it Four years in and the Oilers start to bring in some players, I guess. They bring in Alex Killorn. Second line center is Teddy Bluger. Kaylor Yamamoto still hasn't made that step to be a legitimate first line winger that they need. They bring in Matt Dumba and the goalie carousel continues. However, they do make what is a blockbuster trade. They get Shea Theodore from the Vegas Golden Knights for pretty cheap. Uh, but unfortunately, he's not in the lineup. I check and he's injured. 85 overall unfortunately he is injured so he's not going to be seeing the lineup anytime soon and once again for the second straight year the Oilers miss out on the postseason 77 points but McDavid and Dreisaitl have point increases even though it was just a little bit 97 and 94 with three years left on McDavid's deal and two on Leon's so they've brought in Alexander Steen as well they tried to do these little things but unfortunately it wasn't enough to get them into the playoffs. Shea Theodore sees 15 games registering 8 points, but again it wasn't enough to push them into the postseason. We're five years in, I was hoping the Oilers would make some sort of a splash. They thought bringing in 36-year-old Nick Felino was the splash that they needed. They got Alex Steen with Kaylor Yamamoto, poor Connor McDavid. Their defense is actually shaping up to be pretty good and the goaltending carousel continues. They do have Mackenzie Blackwood though, so that's a nice young starter to bring in. Hopefully that can lead them back to the playoffs and they do just that. They have a monster year, 102 points 
points. I definitely was not expecting that, but with Connor and Leon on your team, anything is possible. Alex Steen has a 30 goal season, Leon has a 121 point season, followed by McDavid's 113, Nick Foligno 58 points. These guys are rejuvenated. I don't know what is in the water in Edmonton, but Mackenzie Blackwood took over the starting role, but it wasn't enough to bring them to the third round of the playoffs. They get eliminated by the Yotes in round number two. Art Ross goes to Leon. Six years in and the Oilers finally do something positive. They bring in Denis Gurionov, who is a legitimate first line winger. Had 83 points in Calgary, so they snipe him from the Battle of Alberta. He's going to play with Yamamoto and McDavid. Leon goes down there to play on the second line. And it is worth noting this is the last year of McDavid's current deal. And they did re-sign Leon to a giant contract. 11.2 for the next eight years. Jesse Pugliarvi is now up to an 87. Yamamoto's up to an 86. They got to pay these guys big time. One year left on Yamamoto, like I mentioned, so they're going to have to shell out some dough, but they finally have a decent top six. They also bring in Anthony Sorelli, so they really went shopping in free agency. Unfortunately, Shea Theodore decided not to re-sign in Edmonton. They also bring in James Reimer as a backup. And the Oilers have a pretty decent year, once again finishing 8th in the NHL. And Connor McDavid went absolutely bananas. 141 points, almost a goal per game, 78 goals. I have never seen a player go so crazy in the simulation. Leon had a pretty good year as well, 106 points. And all those points were enough to bring the Oilers back to the promised land in an all-Canadian final against the Toronto Maple Leafs. In six games, the Oilers are back on top. And surprisingly, Denis Gurionov absolutely went off in the postseason. 42 points in 26 games. The Art Ross goes to Connor. He obviously took home a bunch of hardware, including the Hart and the Rocket Richard. The Conn Smythe, deservingly so, goes to Denis Gurionov. 42 points. That is ridiculous. A lot of Oilers taking a lot of hardware home. Unfortunately though, Kaylor Yamamoto does go to free agency because they obviously have to sign McDavid and they do so to a $13.5 million contract for the next eight years. The Oilers in year seven are stacking the first line. Leon Connor and Conn Smythe winner Denis Gurionov. They bring in Dennis Mulgan and Sammy Blay, Adam Henrique, Ryan Hartman. So they're putting together a pretty good team, looking to go back to back here. Defensively is even more improved with the addition of Hayden Fleury and Travis Sanheim. They bring in all new goalies, Yaros and obviously Braden Holtby. They don't have that great of a year, finishing with 93 points, 12th in. In the NHL. Leon and Connor, again, this is a broken record. One and two in scoring. They're good for about 100 points. And if you're Connor McDavid, maybe 78 goals here and there. Denis Gurionov has another monster season, 94 points. So definitely being carried by those top three. They make it all the way to the Stanley Cup finals, but lose in six games to Crosby and the Penguins. Unfortunately, in year number seven, the Oilers couldn't repeat, but they're going back with what works. They're putting the big three together, Gurionov, McDavid, and Dreisaitl. They're getting some pretty decent depth players here. Trent Frederick, the defense, they bring in John Marino, and again, the goaltending carousel. They can't seem to keep a starting goalie, but it doesn't matter because they win the President's Trophy with 110 points. Connor completely goes off, 133 points, 50 goals each each from the big two and then Denis Gurionov falls off a little bit but still over a point per game with 30 goals and somehow they bring in Rasmus Dahlin. I didn't even see any sort of a trade announcement or anything. That one slipped through the cracks. I couldn't find it either. It wasn't in the trade history but unfortunately it doesn't help because they lose in round one to the Golden Knights. 
I still don't know how they got Rasmus Dahlin, but their forward core is kind of falling apart. A 79 overall as a second line center, but they have King Rasmus, so I don't know if that's going to push him over the edge or not to bring him back to the Stanley Cup final. The goaltenders are not good. A 76 and a 67. That is absolutely awful, and it shows they have an 86 point campaign. The boys just could not put it together. Connor and Leon had kind of a down year. I mean, all things could considered is still pretty good over a point per game, but it's uh, Leon Dreisaitl's lowest point total in many, many years. Rasmus Dahlin in his first year with the Oilers was a good one, but unfortunately that does not translate into success. They somehow brought in David Riddick as a goalie, but it didn't help. We are now 10 years in and the Oilers are looking for some help. They bring in 37-year-old Artemi Panarin along with Elias Lindholm to solidify their top six. Their defense looks pretty decent. They still have King Rasmus, but I don't know what's going on. They can't keep a goalie for their life. Whether they win a cup or whether they finish last in the league, they can't seem to keep a goalie. I don't know how they did it, but they had a 50-win year finishing second in the National Hockey League. Connor McDavid with 62 goals. Goals, 119 points. Rasmus Dahlin had 81. Lindholm had 80. So definitely a huge success bringing those guys in. And I don't know, again, their goaltenders just seemed to go off, but it did not translate into playoff success. They got rid of the Vegas Golden Knights in round one, but the Canucks took care of them in round number two. Leon takes home some decent hardware. He takes home the heart. And after only one year in snowy Edmonton, Artemi Panarin calls it quits as Leon gets it's another Ted Lindsay award. The Oilers are kind of all over the place. They bring in a nice young drafted player who's now 26. Denis Gurionov is getting paid $13.5 million. They bring in Anthony Mantha for the third line. I don't know what this team is looking to do here. They're kind of all over the place. They bring in Elvis Merzlikens, and they do finish fifth in the league. So whatever they're doing, I guess it's working. It's not the traditional way to go about it, but it is working. Uh, Connor doesn't hit 100 points, but Leon gets a point per game, so they're starting to slow down a little bit and they are paying these guys a big bucks. They found a nice winger in this Hamill guy that they drafted. He had 79 points, but again the story continues another early exit in the playoffs. We are now six years removed from the Oilers winning the Stanley Cup. And these guys are looking to go on another run. Hamill on the first line looks to be a good fit with Connor. Denis Gurionov making a trillion dollars on the second line. The goaltenders are still questionable, but I'm not going to worry about it because they make the playoffs. 94 points, finishing 13th in the National Hockey League. Connor once again goes off. Leon has another very, very good year with almost 100 points. They split the goaltending duties between Isaiah and Elvis and they get the job done because the Oilers win their second Stanley Cup in year number 12. They beat out the Detroit Red Wings in a seven game battle and the Oilers are back on top just like that. This time Connor McDavid leads the way. Leon Draisaitl with one less point and of course there you go. The Oilers baby back on top and Connor finally gets his con Smythe after Gurionov stole it from him last time. 13 years in and Connor McDavid hasn't slowed down a bit, 35 years old, still a 97 overall, still showing he's the best player in the world. They bring in 81 overall Aiden Hill, and again, I don't know how they get it done, but they win the President's Trophy by a landslide, 60 wins on the year, 126 points. That's in large part to Connor McDavid having 112 points once again. Can't stop, won't stop with Connor McDavid, and we'll talk about Leon Dreisaitl saddle in a second, but the Oilers go all the way to the Western Conference Final, losing in five games to the Minnesota Wild, and shockingly, Leon Dreisaitl calls it quits after a 95-point campaign. He says, I'm done, I've got my cup rings, I've made a hundred trillion dollars, I'm going back to Germany. We'll have a closer look at Leon's career at the end of the video, but the team definitely looks different without Leon Dreisaitl. Connor McDavid in the last year of his monster contract, down to a 92 overall. The team doesn't look quite as good as it did in the past. Defensively, it's nice to see Rasmus Dahlin's been pretty much a staple for the last eight or nine years. And again, the goaltending carousel, yes, it continues. The Oilers just squeak into the playoffs with 93 points. In Connor's 
his first year without Leon, he doesn't really skip a beat. He completely puts the team on his back. Once again, 111 points, but they get bounced in the first round by the Los Angeles Kings. We're already missing Leon, and Jack Eichel actually retires before McDavid, so that's kind of funny. Year number 15 shows Connor McDavid testing the free agent market. The greatest player that has ever played the game is going to free agency and he signs with the Vegas Golden Knights on a two year deal worth just over $12 million per. So he's not done yet, 94 overall. He's still got lots of gas left in the tank. Again, 94, this team is looking pretty interesting. They're kind of all over the place. And in year number one, they finished 20. 24th in the NHL. So not what Connor was expecting with his year number one Vegas Golden Knights. He has his slowest and lowest point total in many, many years. 88 points, still over a point per game, but I think that's his lowest point total since his rookie season. Year number two in Nevada is a good one for Connor and the Golden Knights. He brings the guys up to third in the NHL. He has 120 points, back up to an 89 overall. A huge bounce back year for the 39-year-old Connor McDavid, who is closing in on 1,000 NHL goal. He's got 969 nice goals at the moment. Unfortunately, regular season success does not translate to postseason. They get knocked out in round one by the San Jose Sharks and he takes home the 35-36 Lady Bing Trophy. We're starting to see some big names retire here. Austin Matthews, Debrinkat, they're all gone. Year number 17 and year number three with Vegas shows Connor McDavid re-upping with the Golden Knights on a two-year deal at 10.5 million bucks. He is down to an 83 overall, but don't worry about that. I still think the points are gonna be there. This team doesn't look fantastic, but they do get into the postseason with 95 points, finishing 11th in the National Hockey League. But once again, they get bounced early in the second round by the LA Kings. He once again takes home the Lady Bing Trophy. And after 22 seasons, Connor McDavid decides to call it quits. The greatest player that the league has ever seen. He finishes with over a thousand goals. We'll go more in depth on his career in a second. Here is the record book you can see on the right hand side. It's Connor and Leon for all of the offensive categories. Obviously absolute legends in Edmonton. As for Vegas, he doesn't have any sort of records because he was only there for a few years, but it is still worth noting. Pretty insane careers for both of these guys. Let's start off with Leon first since he was the first to retire. I was kind of surprised he did retire a little bit early, but a 2021 Hart Trophy, a Lady Bing, a Ted Lindsay, an Art Ross. He finally wins the cup in 25-26 with his buddy Connor. He once again wins the Hart in 29-30 and he adds a Ted Lindsay and then he retires on top with a Stanley Cup in his second last year, but 1,460. 60 games played, 703 goals, 1,015 apples for a total of 1,718 points. That is crazy. That's a lot of numbers. His jersey is definitely going to be retired instantly. 1,718 points. That now brings Leon ninth overall in all-time scoring, bumping Joe Sackick down to 10th. Leon is in sole possession of ninth all-time in scoring, first ballot Hall of Famer, no doubt. Now time for the Big Fish, 22 seasons in the NHL, amassing a total of 1,726 games played, over 1,000 goals, making him the greatest goal scorer of all time, 1,354 assists for a total of 2,363 career points, putting him in sole possession of second place right behind... Wayne Gretzky. Connor McDavid's trophy list is large. He's got an Art Ross in 21, he's got an Art Ross in 25, a Ted Lindsay in 25, a Rocket Richard in 25, a Stanley Cup in 25, a Hart in 25, another Art Ross in 2027, along with the Hart Trophy. He wins the Cup and the Conn Smythe in 31 32, and then back to back Lady Bing trophies. I was kind of shocked he didn't win more Rocket Richards. He had a few 60 goal seasons, but that 
that was in the era of Ovechkin. And I do remember Tarasenko having a 74 goal year, which is kind of ridiculous, but that kind of takes away some Rocket Richards that Connor should have won. But a ridiculous career for Connor McDavid, the most points I've ever seen in a simulation. He went off, he had a 78 goal year, which is just ridiculous. What a career for Connor McDavid, who stays in the Western Conference his entire career. 22 years in the league, and there are 22 incredible years. Thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any comments. What player or what tandem should I do next? And I will see you guys in the next one.